Hi, I'm Theo Stocker for Yachting Monthly and I'm here at the South Coast Boat Show in Southampton at Ocean Village Marina and I'm going to show you a really exciting boat behind me. It's exciting for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's made in Britain. There aren't that many British boat builders around anymore. It's a 32 footer, which is relatively small for the new boat market these days. And it's a bilge keeler, which used to be really popular and there is clearly demand in the market for them but they haven't been built for a while. And this one is a bilge keeler. So I'm really excited to have a look, show you around, and we'll see what it's all about. So we've got a small bowsprit there for a furling headsail um, ahead of the Genoa with a double bow roller. You can see we've got a hull chine coming to quite full bow sections forwards. Um, the knuckle of the boat's just resting out of the water there, um, which is quite a modern design feature. Nice, fast hull shape. Um, the hull chine disappears there um, just by this window. And then we've got three hull windows down the side. Um, and it's not a deck saloon, but you have got these large saloon windows that give it the look a little bit of a deck saloon. Um, and then coming aft, you can see we've got a fixed windscreen around the cockpit. Um, you've got a main sheet that sheets to a traveller on the deck there. Another hull window at the stern here. And then we come round, and rather than an open transom, you can see that we've got a semi-closed transom. Um, and the opening at the moment, there's going to be a bathing platform that folds down but that's not full width, that's just central. Um, and that encloses a really deep, secure cockpit. Hull shape is reasonably conservative. There's a little bit of a um, chine at the aft end here. Let's come around this side. It's a single rudder. And as I said, this boat's actually got um, bilge keels, although a fin keel is an option as well. Well, we're here in the cockpit of the GT325. And the first thing that strikes you is you've got a large single wheel. Lots of boats these days have gone for open sterns, open cockpits, and twin wheels pushed right out to the side. This boat is designed to be a really safe, secure coastal cruising boat. Um, so they've gone for a secure cockpit with a large single wheel on a Jeffer steering system in the middle of the boat, seats all around it. And with the closed transom here, you've actually got a really secure cockpit that's not huge. Um, so you're gonna feel really safe in it even when it's pretty rough um, and there's space probably for sort of four maybe five people to sit comfortably underway. Um, not in at the moment is a, um, a rest that goes across here to give you a perch to sit on when you're helming otherwise you can sit down in the cockpit and I can still see forwards or you can sit up on the combing for a better view forwards um, and I can sit here really comfortably and reach the wheel without having to strain and then I've got main sheet winch and Genoa winch right to hand. I've got a chart plotter on the pedestal, compass, radio, throttle controls, and a nice little touch, you've even got the buttons for the navigation lights. So if you're sailing solo and it's coming towards dusk, you can just turn the navigation lights on without having to leave the helm and go down below, which is really nice. Under my feet here, we've got access to the cockpit locker. So we've got a good big cockpit locker here. And that's hull depth and goes all the way outboard as well. Um, and then aft of the wheel, you've got another small one here. And uh, that's going to have a little bin in it so that it's just ready access stuff. They don't have to reach all the way down. It's worth saying this boat is absolutely brand spanking new. It's not long out of the moulds. Um, this is the first time it's been shown at any boat show um, anywhere. So we're really lucky to get to have a look. Um, there's a few little finishing touches still need to be done on it, but we're really lucky to be able to see it so soon. Um, let's have a look at the forward end of the cockpit. At the forward end of the cockpit, you've got a low step before you go down below, so that keeps water out from sloshing forwards if you get any water on deck. Um, and then you've got all lines led aft on either side through two tunnels, halyards, um, tails, reefing lines, all of that stuff 
furling lines as well coming aft. Um, and they come back to these Anderson winches, Anderson 34 self-tailing winches, all Anderson in the cockpit, and the rest of the deck gear is Luma. Um, you've also got some instrument repeaters on either side, so you can see those as well as what is on the um, pedestal at the wheel. Uh, and this really neat little fixed windscreen, which you might recognize from sort of Baltic cruisers, um, but that just gives you a little bit more shelter, and then there'll be a fold down uh, spray hood that attaches to that. It's also worth pointing out, this is the slot here for the um, uh, support, the helm seat support. And then we've also got these really nice little G&T seats, as they're dubbed. Optional extras to come and sit here. You can sit in the push pit and enjoy your drink at sundowners, or it's a really nice place to sit while you're going along as well. All right, let's go forwards out of the cockpit. You've got these slightly lowered combings here with some grip molding just on top and then out onto these wide side decks aft, thanks to the reasonably wide stern. Um, and then this boat's got synthetic teak decks. Uh, GRP grip molding is standard, um, but the decks are pretty unobstructed. You have to duck slightly under the shrouds, and then you come forwards or onto the foredeck. You can see here we've got these lovely big um, windows, which are toughened safety glass. And then you've got a molding here for a self-tacking jib track. Um, although this boat is fitted with the jib cars, sorry, Genoa cars, for the Genoa rather than the self-tacking jib. Um, and then you can see lines are all led aft through these tunnels on the deck. Um, we've got a traveller main that goes the full width of the coach roof. Um, and then the main sheet attaches to about just after halfway aft along the boom. Um, and then the foredeck, you've got quite a nice large area on the coach roof, so enough areas to put some cushions down and enjoy the sunshine. Um, and loads of opening hatches. Here, these ones go into the um, owner's cabin forward. And then we'll have a look at the bow where you've got a massive bosun's locker and anchor locker. Right, up on the foredeck, um, I've got uh, anchor windlass controls under those flaps. You can also control it from the helm. Um, let's move the furling line to one side, and now I've got this nice big opening. Have I got it right? That's it. I've got a nice big opening anchor locker, bosun's locker here. And I'll show you inside there and I'll show you the um, bow roller as well. It's a double bow roller so you can put a mooring and an anchor on at the same time which is a really nice touch. So that's a whistle stop tour of on deck. Let's go down below and have a look around. <sighs> Down below, you are welcomed into a really welcoming, solid, homely feeling saloon that also feels really seaworthy, practical, and sensible. I, on first impressions, I'm really impressed with it. Um, reasonably steep steps in that the companionway hatch is quite short, but then you have to remind yourself that this is a 32 footer. I found myself forgetting because she feels like a bigger boat. Um, let's have a quick look at the layout. We've got an aft cabin in there on starboard side. You've got a good big generous heads there. You've got a C-shaped galley that is enormous for this size boat. You've got a really good big saloon with a double leaf table that comes up. And then forward, we've got a, an owner's cabin with a large double berth in it there. We've got hull windows on either side. We've got these really large coach roof windows that make it feel a bit more like a deck saloon. I've got an opening hatch here for ventilation. And I've got two sort of almost forwards facing windows at the forward end of the saloon. And then there are not one, but two hull windows in the aft cabin, one in the transom and one outboard. And you've also got hull windows in the forward cabin. This boat is finished in um, oak, um, which gives it a really nice contemporary, but also quite sort of traditional feel. There's going to be a vertical handhold here for coming down the companionway. Uh, which will be really nice. But then you've got a good solid handhold here, and then all the way along the outboard, just along the deck edge here, uh, you've got a really good structural hold there that's sort of quite discreet as well. Under the companionway steps, you've got your engine. It's a Yanmar. I'll have to check on the horsepower for you. Some nice little touches in here. You've got lighting, they fitted lighting, which is really good. 
You've also got forced ventilation. So there's a fan that blows air out of the engine compartment and sucks air in. And cleverly, the air is sucked in from the hanging locker, your wet locker in the heads compartment. So the air is always pulled through that locker, making sure that any waterproofs or anything that's a bit damp in there gets dried out every time that the engine's running, which is just genius. So coming into the galley, I'm fully enclosed here. So I, there's absolutely no problem with bracing. Um, and I've got loads of stowage. These are all lockers, handles still to be added. These ones bottom opening. Um, I've got a massive dry pantry in here. Um, I've got a front opening fridge here aft. And importantly, that's on the forward and aft axis rather than sideways. So if I'm heeling over and I open the door, nothing's gonna fall out. I've got a three burner fully gimbaled oven. I've got a uh, sink and a half double sink here. And I've got workspace, uninterrupted workspace um, uh, at the aft end. I've got little openings for bins here. I've got more work surface space here. Um, and importantly, I've also got ventilation. So that hatch opens there to vent any galley fumes. So it's a really sensible layout for the galley. For a 32 footer, this is an enormous head. We've got a hanging locker there at the aft end, toilet, sink, and shower. And there's some protective tape on the floor at the moment. Um, and you've also got your holding tank there. So all as it should be, and it's just at the bottom of the companionway steps. Here we go, into the forward cabin. Um, and I'm really struck by how big this is for a 32 footer. I'm six foot one, so I've got about six foot standing headroom in here. But that's very comfortable. I've got full standing width all the way across, da -da -da -da, uh, which is really nice. Sorry. Um, a few little bits of blue tape, that's just because there's some finishing touches to be done to the boat, like covered handles. But here I've got a full hanging wardrobe, um, and I've got some shelf space on the other side. Open that one. And then I've got these really deep fiddled shelves all the way around with bin lockers underneath them. Same at the forward end, there's bin lockers under there, I'll show you that. And then I've got absolutely shed loads of storage, stowage under here. So there's a big bin that comes out here uh, and that go, that's hull depth and that's on both sides, um, which means that sails, kit bags, folding bikes, spares, whatever you need for a serious cruising adventure. For a 32 footer, 33 footer, there is enough space to take it with you, particularly if you're cruising as a couple. I've got loads of ventilation as well, which I like. I've got a big opening hatch here, and then these two little opening hatches just at the aft end. So you can get lots of air in, as well as the hull windows for enjoying the view while you're in bed. Again, similar quality finish, oak veneer with all solid oak edging, Make, gives it a really solid quality feel. And the headlining throughout is this sort of padded headlining. There's no exposed GRP, which gives it a really classy feel. Right, let's have a look at the aft cabin on the starboard side. Slightly tight doorway coming in there. And you have to turn around to sit down. So you've got this big bulkhead for the heads compartment there, and you've got the cockpit molding here. I'll show you in more detail. Right, so I am in the um, aft cabin, which is on the starboard side, um, and I'm just sitting on the end of the berth. You can see this is the little bit where the cabin is a bit tight. This is a 32 footer, don't forget that. Once you come in and have a look, you're in a completely different world and you will forget it. So we come in and look at this. This is a huge double berth. Uh, the panels have been taken off there for the machinery space. They will be covered in. But I really like the fact um, in here that we've got um, hull windows. So you've got a, a closed hull window here and you've got an opening hull window in the transom there, which is one of the reasons they didn't go for a full width bathing platform. Um, and then you've got stowage um, outboard. You've got uh, deep fiddled shelves. Um, you've got a bin locker here behind me, I think. Oh no, that's a plug socket, sorry. Um, and then there is a small amount of hanging locker space here. Um, and there is stowage underneath the bunks as well. Um, so this is very much uh, a secondary cabin for children, grandchildren, or guests if they're on board for a shorter time. Um, the uh, forward cabin is clearly the owner's cabin but actually there's a place to be. The finish in here is exactly the same quality. You've got all the nice headlining, you've got the oak veneers um, and all of that. 
um, and you've also got good ventilation. So this feels like a larger, other than the, the access, this feels like a much larger cabin than on a 32 footer. So that was a quick look around the brand new GT325, which is built uh, on the Hamble River here in the UK. I hope you've enjoyed looking around it as much as I have. I've found it really exciting to see a boat that is a serious small cruising boat. Um, it's built in the UK completely. So a few stats and numbers. Um, length overall 9.97 meters. So she comes in at just under 33 feet and almost all of that 29 foot six inches um, is waterline length as well. So she promises to have pretty good performance. Um, she's a bilge keeler as standard, although a fin keel is an option, um, which is really exciting to see. There aren't that many bilge keelers on the market today. Um, and so her draft is one meter 42, which is under five foot. So she's pretty shallow draft. She can sit on both of her keels uh, and dry out if you want to go into uh, drying harbors. And there are plenty of those around the UK. Um, and she'll be perfectly stable like that. Uh, displacement of five and a half tons, just over five and a half tons means she's not the lightest um, 32 footer but she is a really solid cruising boat that's also designed to have quite a powerful rig she's Stephen Jones designed he definitely knows what he's doing um, uh, it takes its heritage from the Saddler 290 and that kind of boat and there hasn't been that kind of thing built in the UK for a while there is definitely a market because the second hand market for this type of boat is really strong construction wise this boat is built in vinyl ester resin um, certainly the hull is uh, and that's vacuum infusion to keep it really stiff and light uh, and then you've got the engineered hull matrix that is part of the hull molding uh, that takes the bilge keels um, so she is really strong really stiff and then she's got a single rudder uh, balanced spade rudder with the large wheel that we saw in the cockpit in terms of price uh, she comes in at about £230,000-£240,000 excluding VAT for the sail away price, including sales and all of your um, sort of basic specs. Um, clearly, you can add some other tick box options on top of that. Um, but that's not a silly price given where the market is today. And I think she feels like a cracking boat. It feels like a much bigger boat built to a very high spec. Um, inside, think, I don't know, maybe on the second hand market, Southerly 32s, but also Sirius in Germany, Halberg Rassi um, in Sweden. You're thinking that kind of level of finish. Um, but she's built here in the UK and uniquely she has bilge gears. And I think that makes her a really exciting boat.